Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Throne Breaker The Witcher Tales. We're still heading towards Aldersburg, and uh, the chest we got the key from at the end of the last episode is apparently right over here. So let's just open that up, and we get the ooh the avatar for uh, Isabel. That is interesting for Ingwent. And there's a few more things over here, and more recruits. So as I said before, we have enough wood to actually buy the upgrades for uh, the war wagon and such because those are actually pretty expensive but i feel like i need to hold off until i have a bit more resources so we have a fast travel point and now we have our next point of interest Meave shook her Gutted head in granaries. as she surveyed the landscape before her the nilf guardians had destroyed everything in their path burned farms trampled fields Leveled orchards. The bastards. She hissed. They mean to cause a famine. When the Lyrians reached Braithwaite, a small village near Aldersburg, they saw gaunt men and women, more bone than flesh, gnawing on acorns and boot leather. The invaders had requisitioned every scrap of the village's food stores and hauled it off to their nearby camp. In strained voices, the villagers begged the Queen to help them retrieve their supplies. Milady! Frost will come before we know it. Felt help us. Why not a soul will live to see the Thor? Meave looked around at the blackened, scorched village, at the walking skeletons who dwelled in it. The suffocating smoke bellowing up from the fields sent tears streaming down her face. I'll do what I can, was all she said. She knew this was not the time for a rousing speech. She needed to act. And act we will, because we don't really have a choice in this regard, apparently. Well, we have a choice to actually do something about it or not, so uh, we'll check out that gap in a minute. Have mercy. We'll waste away and starve. My lady. Okay, we'll waste away and starve. I'm just gonna head over here first, because I think this is a dead end. To see if we... Ooh. Oh, that is that camp, probably. Did they say to the north? I must have missed that. Never mind. Sorry. Apologize for that. Doesn't seem to be much here, obviously, because, of course, those are the burnt fields. So let's take care of those Nilf Guardians now, shall we? Knock, knock. The Lyrians reached the outer defenses of the camp where the Nilf Guardians had taken Braithwaite's food stores. Rayla delivered her report. Three heavy infantry regiments, Nazari Arbalists, the warrior said. And I heard neighing, so they've cavalry as well. Neve said nothing, working it over in her head. The fate of the starving villagers weighed on her heart, but was it worth risking heavy losses to aid them? Of course it is. Attack the garrison. The North Guardians keep food in storage and watch it rot while peasants perish from hunger. Will we allow this? The Queen said, addressing her soldiers. <laughs> cried the soldiers. I didn't think so. Neve said with a smile as she drew her weapon. Lyrians! Attack! Here we go, Lyrian's attack, and whatever else we have in our in our uh, deck right now. The battle for the granary. Meath wondered whether a single Nilf guardian felt shame for seizing food from a defenseless peasant, condemning him to starve slowly and painfully. Would he endure sleepless nights plagued by nightmares, perhaps turn away in disgust upon seeing his own reflection in the looking glass? She had her doubts. So again, a shortened battle, so we can use everything we want to. And they have a nice wall, apparently. Today our swords shall taste imperial blood. Okay, we have a wall. Walls always have their own rules. He can strengthen all allies by one. And we have palisades. Every turn on turn start, boost a random ally by two and give it to armor. Death wish, destroy all palisades and boost all enemies in hand, deck and on the battlefield by two. So that's good. That's good. So that boosts all of us. So that means I'm gonna start off with the Grey Rider and let him swap rows constantly then. There we go. Naturally. At once. New orders? No? Ah. So you can strengthen. Yeah, that includes the gate for some reason. Um. Let's use the drummer. Arm is a waste of time for one like And you. start generating some points. Must be Force two units, so the, the gate is probably a boss, yeah. This could hurt. And I can actually set the palisade row on fire, although I'm gonna do the back row. 
Using the drummer, ah, we get another ah, excitement there. Do I use Meave already? No, I'm gonna wait one more turn for Meave. Life is mine now. Okay, so yeah, that gate needs to die. Carny vessels, hungry like a wolf. So that moves that guy, the Grey Rider. Uh, we can use Meave on the castle gates. Are we gonna be able to kill that? Because that is a lot. That's 36. It can be moved. And I feel like I might be able to do more on those other things. Let's just do that. Let's just weaken the guys in the back first. Because I feel like I won't be able to destroy the gate anyway. Okay, there we go. Then we can put Black Rayla down in front, moving the Grey Rider. And there we have Nickers. And the turn. Wise choice. Then we use the Forager first, so we can put the Forager over here. Then we use Rayla. What can we use? What can we use? We have... We got damaged a bit. So we might as well get Egg out here. So let's put Egg over here. God that moves the Grey Rider back. Christ. And then we can use the Forager to take out the Light Infantry. And damage those. One of those Arbalest is almost down. I don't know, I could have used the fire on uh, the wall, but I feel like it's not necessary. And we get more and more damage, so that's good. So, I think Isabel is going to be our last. Do we make? Yeah, I'm going to force two units to actually duel it out. Because I'm going to use my uh, stuff here, otherwise. Two Nickers. Nick is going gonna, gonna to probably eat that. So, let's have this guy fight this guy. There we go. That takes out one of those. And the turn. Because I can't do that with bosses, sadly enough. Otherwise, I would have done that. Whenever an ally is destroyed, this unit loses 25% because he starts at 78. We've seen that once more, once before, I think. Let's get Xavier in here. As ordered. Then give two charges to... Rayla, yeah, sadly boosts those guys as well, but nothing I can do about that. Then, let's get Rayla to get... Could put another war wagon right next to you can try the Forager. Off, but you won't. And then use Rayla again. And I'm gonna use the Forager. Yeah, the Forager. And then we're going to use the Forager on this row with Nickers. No, I'm going to use him on the on the, the Light Infantry. There we go, 10 damage, but they're still gaining a lot there. So now that one Arbalest is almost down, so if I can kill that guy... Ooh, yeah, yeah. This is starting to hurt a lot. Um, boost all allies and damage all enemies. So, and that guy loses a lot of health as well. And Meave, we're gonna wait for Meave until the very end. We still have Rainit. And they're still drawing cards, which is, which is just ridiculous. Okay, give one charge to each of our units. That moves that. We have Rayla. Uh, let's use the regiment drummer first. So that's a sideman. Move that down this here. Will be reaping black clad heads. Gonna have to be careful here because I don't want to miss anything. Then black Rayla to get Isbel out. So Isbel over here. It's not too late to Moving walk the gray rider again. Oh, I can't use Isbel. 
Yeah, I fucked up there. But I think I might still be able to win this if I play this right. Give Rayla another charge. Then I'm free to use my two foragers. So that's that. And then this guy up to 83. Then we use Black Rayla to play the Lyrian Merlot. And get Isbal up to 89. And then just destroy the Black Infantry Arbalest, which reduces the health of the this guy as well, the command Commandant. And we're 163 points ahead. Sadly, I can't use that order ability. That would have been even nicer. Because it's 21. Yes. The fire is still going. So yeah, they're all the same gaze of Whitman. So we won that easily. And I didn't even use Isbel. Because that would have been a lot more as well. Damn it. Okay, need to keep that in a, in, uh, in mind that she's an order ability. There we, we go. We've managed to rout the Nilfgaardian troops and regain the stolen supplies. However, the Queen's good humor faded soon after the battle. Her soldiers began loudly demanding she not return to the village, but keep the food for her troops. We've nigh empty bellies too, my lady. Or whatever we give them, the black-clad bastards will just steal right back. Better to strengthen our own army than the enemy's. I hate to choose the middle grounds, because I we've been punished for this multiple times, but I feel like in this case it really is just the best option to just do 50-50. Because uh, of course the soldiers have a point. So morale is something I can deal with, but I don't want to lose half my army of course if that is something that can happen. I don't know if that's something that actually can happen, this game needs to continue of course. But let's return half the supplies and keep the rest. Easy it would have been to take offense at the soldier's words, to accuse him of greed. But his words held much merit. Meave's army had no less need for the food than the peasants, and in war-ravaged Edern there were few chances to replenish their supplies. After a moment's hesitation, the Queen announced her decision. We shall divide the food. Half we return to the peasants, half we keep for ourselves. Okay, we get wood. Which is good, and we didn't lose morale. Which is interesting. So we didn't lose and we didn't gain. Probably if you chose, you've chosen the soldiers, you gain morale. If we choose the peasants, we lost morale. But nothing of that just happened, so that's good. Now, if we go back to the village, what does that mean? Yeah, we have a question mark over here now. Ah, oh, this is going to be interesting. At first, the peasants were glad to see the soldiers. But their joy quickly turned to anger when they found Meave had decided to return only half the recovered supplies. And for the queen to stoop so low, so low, robbing good folk, starving good folk. Ugh. Meave refused to argue with the villagers. Yes, justice was on their side. But in times of war, justice counts for little. Yeah, it's... Is it still robbing if you didn't have it in the first place anymore? We gave you half back, which is more than you could... And, oh, wow. What was that noise? Something really gurgling was sounding in the background. Crossing the bridge. So that means we're Meet in... Oh, okay. And flattened its ears, uh oh for no visible cause. Uh -oh. Trusting in animal instinct, Meave jumped to the ground and felt tremors under her boots. At yeah, first, they were golems. Fit, barely palpable. Then grew stronger and stronger. What's I love going the sound on? design of this kid. Why does the earth tremble? Before anyone could respond, a scout from the forward guard let out a terrified cry. A moment later, snap trees crashed down around them, and out of the woods came a 30 foot tall stone giant. Gods, whispered the queen. What is that? A golem. Isbel whispered back. Favorite servant. Of Nilfgaardian mages. As if to confirm his words, soldiers marched out from behind the giant, clad in heavy black plate. This is gonna be interesting. Their leader, however, wore but a light tunic, and his hands glowed with a strange blue light. Dithen Quan Illyrian! He shouted, giving the order to attack. Glor and Ad Is that 
a familiar face or not, because the design could be Albridge, but... The first Nilfgaardian invasion was eventually repelled due in large part to the aid of mages and sorceresses, who tilted the scales in the Nord's favor at the, uh, the Battle of Solden. In preparation for the next war, the Emperor devoted greater resources to Nilfgaard's own school of magic in order to diminish the Nordlings' advantage. Before long, new recruits began to appear in the Imperial Army's ranks, recruits who stood over a dozen feet tall served with unwavering obedience and were made of solid rock. There we go, Albridge. Call that. Eliminate Albridge, the Colossus of Nazair. It's a story battle with special rules. And yeah, Albridge. So Albridge is also carding Gwent. And is a... Uh, well, a very loyal sorcerer from the Nilfgaardian army. So again, pretty good. Construct boss. The enemy only has two cards in hand. Which I feel like one of them is going to be Albridge. Deploy and spawn two lesser golems, and that's pretty much it. Interesting. I'm just gonna play this out as we always do, and if anything fancy happens, I'll see you in a second. Without hesitation. My powers are here. And there we go, something fancy happened. Albridge. Break the mage's spell, and the golem's power will wane to naught. So Albridge, every turn on turn start damage the highest enemy unit by the power of the lowest unit in the opponent's hand. Which is 6 at the moment. That is interesting. So we should focus our efforts on Albridge. I'm gonna be able to use Isbel immensely here, I feel like. So let's just play it slow then if i can move this you over try here to win them all, but you won't. we start boosting a bit on the field here and i have a higher unit to block uh, my rider being killed that's six so it's gonna be six every time boost aldrich and the lowest enemy in your opponent's hand by one he could do that every time, didn't he? I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't able to read that completely, sadly. So he's boosting my lowest unit in hand, which calls, of course, Albridge to do more damage. Again and again and again. That is a problem. Now my drummer is the highest unit, and he's gonna get damaged by six, I think, because it's on turn start. Okay. And he's gonna boost him by one every time, right? And spawn a base copy of this card. Yeah, he's gonna keep the doing mage. that. Kill the mage! Yeah, I was I was that far ahead. If I just use egg now, I fear not. He's gonna get damaged. God. I know that, but it should be fine for now. Should have been egg first, because now I can use the drummer, and she can't technically hurt me anymore, I think. I'm well, Aubridge can't hurt me anymore. Me. Um, and, and the turn? That fire doesn't seem to affect him much. He hasn't been damaged once. So he passed now. That apparently has a limited amount of uses. Okay. So let's just use me von Aubridge again. Ah, because there is no unit in my hand anymore, probably. Interesting. Then we can use the... The... The drummer to get... Oh my god, I'm a lucky bastard. I am a lucky bastard. So, first things first. I need to reuse the forager. There we go. And then I can use Xavier to reuse the forager again. And get that last infantry unit. Yeah, we're not gonna kill Albridge, that is, but then we can use the drummer to this get more excitement. Reaping black clad heads. Oh, there we go. My spirit's willing and how but these damn boots are killing me. And then Black Rayla to get or maybe even the Ligon Merlot. Yeah, we're at 28, so that's pretty much the highest I can get points wise. Then we can force two units to duel each other. So let's take out those two golems. There we go. That's also eight more points. And the turn. And then use Isbel. 
Okay. Boost allies at random by the total damage taken during this battle. I don't know what that actually did. I feel like a lot has been boosted, but yeah, there we go. Never mind, it doesn't really matter. There we go. Your grace, it worked! And we got them. We didn't kill all bridge. But I feel like that was completely optional. Raising her shield against the whistling rain of arrows, Meave fought her way towards the Nilfgaardian mage leading the attack. At close quarters, Magic Arcana would stand no chance against a well-swung blade. Meave roared, delivering a powerful blow. Her blade severed the mage's aorta, and drowning in his own blood, he fell to the ground. Okay, so goodbye, Albrich. He choked out by way of last words. Then the blue aura coming from his hands flickered out, and the stone giant thundered to the ground in pieces. There we go. When the dust of the battle had settled, the queen ordered her men to search the Nilfgaardian camp. In the mage's tent, they found a rare instrument used to communicate at a distance, a megascope. The crystals encrusted in its brass frame were still warm, meaning it had recently been used to conduct a conversation. The burning question was, with whom? Isbel! yelled the queen. The mage dutifully came closer. This device, could you activate it? Yes, your grace. But are you sure? I am. Get to work. Isbel nodded, then began calibrating the magic device. Finally, something clicked. A light flickered on, and before Meave's eyes appeared the outline of a Nilfgaardian general. There we have Ardal in the flesh, finally, because we've read about him a few times, and he's actually one of the new leaders in Gwent. And what is that animal? Looks like a kind of... fox? Speak common, please. I know not your tongue. Oh. Forgive me, I thought I spoke to someone else. Good to see you in good health, Queen. Or ex-Queen, I suppose, would be the more apt title. Oh, I love his voice Instead acting. Instead of fretting so much over my title, give yours. Of course. Where are my manners? Duke Adel Ebdahi, Grand Chancellor, Commander of Army Group East. I believe you've heard of me. Yeah, we heard of you. Of course I have. You were the coward who, instead of facing me himself, employed traitors to do his bidding. What you call cowardice, I call diplomacy. And you must admit this diplomacy has proven quite successful. First Lyria, then Rosberg, and Southern Edern, all taken without any real losses. Enjoy it while you can. Easy victories are short-lived. Is that what you think? I'm afraid you're in for an unpleasant surprise. Uh-oh. Is that a threat? No, I think it's probably already happened then. No. A simple prediction. Enough of this. Why use this megascope? What is it you want? Hmm. I wanted to see the man who's butchering Eren to tell you I shall never surrender. Curiosity, my only reason. Huh. Yeah, let's stay calm. I was simply curious. Wondered whom the mage had contacted. <laughs> curious. How oh, fascinating. You northerners are so primitive. Like mindless magpies taking anything that shines back to their nest. Your thirst for knowledge now quenched, please allow me to see to my duties. Farewell, your majesty. Or rather, till next time. For there will be a next time, I assure you. Yeah. See you next time, Ardal. A quiet fell over the tent. The queen stepped outside, squinted her eyes against the glare of the burning fields, and swore to herself that when she did see Grand Chancellor Ardal Epdahi again, I thought he was he a duke. A whole head shorter. Why is he a Grand Chancellor all of a sudden? Also, thunder. Okay, that is interesting. That usually does well. 
severe damage to a single unit, and we're actually lacking that. Um, let's take a look at that. But usually trinkets can't be used against boss characters. Damage a unit by 10 and units adjacent to it by 5. Well, might as well try that out. There we go. Also Thunder in the deck. And uh, while we're on the subject, we might as well check out the workshop. So we could either go for the armory, which allows us to, most importantly, get the Lyrian Hajduk, which gives us a charge to the card on the right, which is very, very handy. Or my other option is to go for the Engineer's Drafting Desk, which needs a lot more wood, but gets us the Blacksmith to replay a Trinket, uh, upgrades the War Wagon with three Light Infantry units, and the Artusa Adept, which allows us to copy a few uh, a bronze unit uh, in the battlefield or in hand and add two copies of it to our deck. That might be interesting, but I feel like the Harshduk would be more interesting on the short run. It's just a human and not a blitz unit, sadly. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the Harshduk. There we go. That limits our wood uh, expenses there as well. Which is fine for now. I'm not actually going to make some adjustments to the deck now. So I did get rid of a few slingers and knickers. And added two Rivian sappers and two Lyrian Hush Dukes. So that should give us a bit more variety in what we can do. Uh, I'm still not sure what Isbel actually does with the boost allies at random by the total damage taken during this battle. Because I would think that if... Because for example the last time the damage was 49... If she, why didn't she boost the allies by 49 or something in between there? Because we just saw plus one on all allies. I'm gonna have to use it a few more times to see what that does. So uh, moving on. And I think we might have time for one more point of interest. So let's move on. I can't do anything oh, with these things over here. As if nobody lifted a finger against the Nilfgaardians. King surely ordered all his armies to return to Aldersburg. Took cover behind its walls. <clears throat> I do not wish to dismay, but after what we saw at Rossburg... Enough doomsaying, Gascon. Enough doomsaying, Gascon. There's soldiers over there, but... I don't know how I can reach them. Probably further on. On the north we have a notice board and then another battle. And I feel like the puzzle battle might actually be quicker. So, since we don't have that much time left... I'm actually going to go towards the puzzle first and then loop back in the next episode. Oh, and we have another treasure chest over here, apparently. Totally by accident. And we get another border for in Gwent. Can't actually... Oh, I can. I can. Never mind. So let's head towards those soldiers and see what these guys were all about. Hello, fellas. What's up here? So, puzzle battle, corrupt weapons. Elves used to say that Dwan are imitators, that they're only capable of mimicking other races. There's a grain of truth in that, and it's difficult to deny the innovative nature of humans. After all, they can turn anything, absolutely anything, into a weapon. Destroy all Rottossers and cow carcasses. Do not let any cow carcasses explode on your side. So yeah, Rottossers. Okay, so... Whenever this unit takes damage, move to the other side of the battlefield. That wish if this unit is on Meave's side, Meave loses. Um, so I need to give it down. Every two turns on turn start, spawn a cow carcass on the opposite side. Interesting. So I think I should put down Wa Wagenberg. So these guys spawn a cow carcass on the opposite row. Okay. But I need to just destroy all Rotosses and cow carcasses. I feel like I need to take out the Rotosus first. So now we got that. Um, let's do this, this, this. That moves them over there. And now we're at five. Okay. Then if we use the other slinger to get those three Bring other carcasses. They hide well. There we go. 
And now we can take care of this entire row. I have one more slinger, so I should probably wait. So let's end the turn. So that keeps going. Then I use my other slinger to move those back. There we go. And then we can finish this, because we can just do this. There we go. All of those die. And then we use this on that row. And they're all down. We didn't even use our final card. That was, again, pretty straightforward. Just lay down the Wagenbergs and then just get the advantage of the, all those cows spawning next to the Wagenbergs. So, uh, yeah, Rot Tossics are pushovers. They really are pushovers. Uh, can't I go in between here? Yeah, I can. There's a little colorful... And there's a unicorn! That's gonna have to wait until next, uh, next time. Uh, I do want to check this out. My lady, we found a group of farmers languishing in the barn. Their skin is covered in oozing sores. Some horrid affliction by the look of it. They beg for coin to sate their hunger and thirst, as they've no strength left to work in the fields. Uh, I shan't refuse those in need. Give them whatever whatever's necessary. We lose coin, but we get morale. They shall die for long anyway, or we have Isabel tend to them. Perhaps she can devise a cure so that they may join our ranks. We can actually just cure them. We don't get the morale for that, but we actually get eight recruits. I lost a few making some more soldiers, but this feels like the best option. I feel like usually the character options are the best. But one damned week, but the army was shattered to bits and pieces. So yeah, these are Black Edernian soldiers. Grind their teeth against our walls. Bloody empty promise by our leaders. Indeed. Commander, onward to Ebbing. Bloody idiot. Okay. For me in your ranks, your Aha, there we go. That, that was what I was waiting for. I do so with loyalty deserving of my own king. There we go. One more recruit. Does this guy want to join as well? No. Okay. Let's get the final resources. And with that, I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, see you guys next time when we'll... I think we might be able to reach Aldersburg next time. So thanks again enormously for watching. And hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.